Haraway depicts a utopian society of cyborgs in which prejudice disappears. She imagines cyborgs as genderless and without race. Religion also disappears as we lose the necessity for a Genesis story. With the elimination of religion and Genesis stories, the heteronormative male-centric form of narration also disappears, which opens us up to write in a form that everyone can easily express themselves through. Gender is greatly defined by sexuality. Without sexual attraction, there would be no need for socially constructed gender norms. Cyborgs will change the way we reproduce. Asexual reproduction would become the norm, and the need for gender norms attached to sexual attraction would disappear. We would then have the opportunity to live without the pressure of meeting socially created sexual attraction criteria. We could move beyond race and gender and live in a truly connected society. We would be connected through the grid and feel united in a way we all crave. Every member of society would act for the benefit of the society creating a utopia. A cyborg is a cybernetic organism, a hybrid of machine and organism, a creature of social reality, as well as a creature of fiction. The cyborg is resolutely committed to partiality, irony, intimacy, and perversity. It is oppositional utopian, and completely without innocence. The cyborg world might be about lived social and bodily realities in which people are not afraid of their joint kinship with animals and machines, not afraid of permanently partial identities and contradictory standpoints. There is nothing about being female that naturally binds women. There is not even such a state as being female. Gender race or class consciousness is an achievement first on us. They are forced by the terrible historical experience of the social realities of patriarchy, colonialism, and capitalism. The machine is us, our processes, an aspect of our embodiment. We can be responsible for machines. They do not dominate or threaten us. We are responsible for boundaries. We are they. I would suggest that cyborgs have more to do with regeneration and are suspicious of the reproductive matrix and of most birthing. We have all been injured profoundly. We require regeneration, not rebirth, and the possibilities for our reconstitution include the utopian dream of the hope for a monstrous world without gender. Haraway presents us with a utopia, but as with all utopian visions, the realities of our current society and the ways in which societies actually develop are ignored. People's best selves are used in utopian visions, and it is forgotten that people have very amoral moments. In the development of cyborgs, we believe that, because we are human, our selfish and sexually driven selves will prevent a utopia from being actualized. We agree with DeVos when she points out that most depictions of cyborgs are extremely sexualized and very much gendered. Technological advancements have given rise to the advent of plastic surgery for beauty enhancements. It is our belief that as cyborgs are created, the standard for sexual attractiveness will rise. As we begin to fuse with technology, we will gain further control over our appearance. Being primarily sexual beings, we want to be as sexually attractive as possible. Here, gender norms will become more and more extreme. Perhaps reproduction will become asexual, but sex will never leave our society. We are a very sexually oppressed and sexually confused society. There are already examples of mechanical sex toys and dreams of sex robots. The integration of cyborgs into our society will only feed into and confuse these ideas. We believe that the actualization of cyborgs will create chaos in our ideas of sex and gender. There will never be a genderless society, and never be a society without discrimination. Unfortunately, utopias are unattainable.